So when it comes to preparing for any sort of natural disaster, emergency, uh, there it's pretty easy to to figure out what the big things you should be doing are. You've got the food storage, you've got the water storage, you've got the bug out bags, things like that, that when you search online, get talked about over and over again. But sometimes it's the little things that we don't really think about that could have a huge impact on how those different events unfold and how those situation goes. In this video, I want to talk about 10 things that are overlooked sometimes by the average person. Uh, and as far as preppers, you, you probably have most of these figured out, but there might be a couple on here that you don't. But for the average person, these are things that don't really get talked about a lot. But if you're missing one of these, it could have a really big impact on how things go in a disaster situation or in an emergency situation. So let's talk about a few of these. And the first one I want to go through here, it because it's the most important one, and there's a lot of different areas to this, is your water storage. And water storage is, without water, everything else is pretty much pointless. If you have to go three or four days and you don't have enough water to last that long, you're going to be in dire straits. So water is one of those things that is both the easiest part of preparedness as well as the hardest. Not because it's hard to store water, mainly because it's hard to store enough water the rule of thumb is that the average person needs one gallon of water per person per day. And while that doesn't seem like a lot on the surface, that basically means you would need for a, it's something that lasts two weeks, which is which is fairly likely you would need 14 gallons of water. Now, a more realistic number is probably going to be two gallons of water per person per day because we are going to use more than we think we are. So just to be you know, safe, I would say two gallons of water per person per day. Now you think about two weeks there and you're looking at about 30 gallons of water for one person. If you've got a family of three, you're looking at almost 100 gallons of water. And that is pretty tough depending on what your living situation is. That is pretty tough to store 100 gallons of water. So we need to think about other options as well with this. You've got the water bob, which in an emergency, it's something that you just put in your bathtub, you fill it up, and you've got 50, 60 gallons of water right there, which is a great, as long as you've got a little bit of lead time, it's a great way to bulk up how much water you have stored. And on top of storing the water that's already clean water, we need to understand about how to clean water that isn't coming out of the tap. So we need to understand about chemicals that are in it. We need to understand about all the contaminants in it and how to get those out. And that's where learning about the different types of water filters come in. So that's as important as well when it comes to water. Uh, also, with the cleaning water, we need to be able to find water in a situation where maybe the grid is down and the water isn't flowing out of the faucet. Where could we go to find that water? There could be streams in your neighborhood, lakes, ponds, uh, golf courses, all those different places where there might be a water source available. But you also need to understand what might be in that water if you're going to be able to get that out and is that water source a viable option. Number two here on the list is fire starters. Back in the day when newspapers were a thing, you could take, you know, 10 pounds of newspaper, stuff it under a big log uh, and light that and then just keep stuffing more and more newspaper until the fire was finally lit. These days, newspapers are far and few between. And on top of that, that's really not the best option anyway. So learning about different fire starters, learning how to actually build a fire uh, to get it to light in the quickest amount of time without using all of your resources. You've got, there's a hundred different ways to start fires. You've got the dryer lint, you've got Vaseline and cotton balls, you've got the pre-made uh, fire starters that you can buy, you've got jute twine. Uh, you've got the ferro rods. I mean, a lot of different ways to start a fire, but it's important that one, you know how to use a few of these different methods, and two, that you actually practice this and learn this and understand what you're in for, uh, because a disaster situation is not the time uh, for learning. Right now is the time to learn how to build a fire, what is going to work best for you, you know, how much of the, the resources are you going to need. All of these different things are, are things that we should be learning now and not wait till a disaster strikes and then try to figure that situation out then. 
Number three I've got here, which is overlooked quite a bit, and this is good shoes. We talk about bugging out all the time. We talk about how much we might be working in some sort of emergency or disaster situation. If it's a tornado or hurricane, we might be doing cleanup and all sorts of other things. If it's a bigger event, we might be bugging out. We might be walking. There might be situations where we're trying to get home from work, a get home situation where we're going to need to be walking. And we are wearing, you know, maybe you work in a cubicle or an office building, you're going to be wearing your dress shoes or your high heels. Those are not ideal for walking long distances. So you would need to have really good shoes, uh, hiking boots, tennis shoes, comfortable shoes that are going to last, comfortable shoes that are not going to cause blisters and not going to cause pain and make a bad situation even worse. That's the main thing with everything that I'm talking about today is making sure that a bad situation isn't made worse because you're unprepared for those. Number four here on the list is entertainment. And this doesn't, this isn't necessarily a survival supply, but this is something I think is very important and something people don't think about because when you're thinking about an emergency or disaster, you're thinking about what do I need to survive? How much food do I need? How much water do I need? But entertainment is absolutely uh, an important one, especially if you have children. Uh, board games, books, things like that, that can, ways to recharge cell phones and tablets. Those things right there, while they may not be that survival item, quote unquote, uh, they will help you maintain your sanity. Uh, if you have kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But even on a personal level, if it is a power outage, if there is you know, really nothing to be done other than wait, you've got everything taken care of, you're going to be sitting there, and if you don't have something to do, your your mind is going to start racing. Having entertainment supplies helps you, you know, keep your morale up, and uh, it really does serve a purpose. So I think having those entertainment supplies, and they're pretty easy to store. You probably have them around your house anyway, but I think having those entertainment supplies uh, are an absolute must. All right, number five here I've got on the list is camping supplies. And even if you don't plan on going out into the wilderness, even if you are not a camper at all, when you think about camping supplies, those are survival supplies. You're going out into the wilderness intentionally, but you want to survive while you're out there doing it. So camping supplies absolutely are survival supplies. You've got the mini camp stoves, the coolers, the grills, the tents, uh, the sleeping bags, all of those things uh, are the same exact things that you would need in an emergency or disaster or grid down situation. So having those supplies, regardless whether you go camping or not, uh, and using those supplies and learning how those supplies are going to work for you uh, is also important. But having those, I think, is a good a good way to jumpstart a preparedness plan and also gives you other options. Yes, most of us these days have a propane grill, depending on where you live. But if you have a little Coleman stove or a little camp stove, a little rocket stove, things like that, that will give you different options in different situations, uh, just make everything a whole lot easier. So I think camping supplies are one of those things that don't get talked about a lot, but are definitely something to consider as far as adding to your preparedness supplies. Number six on the list here is solar lights. Now, in preparedness, there are rechargeable batteries, there are solar power devices, just a, a million different things you can think of. But something that doesn't get talked about very often are the, the lights around your yard, the ones that go down your walkway, the, the, the lights that you can attach to the outside of your garage, whether they're motion activated or not. Those lights, some of them that stake in the ground, you can grab those up and you can use those as a light source at night inside your home. You stick them out during the day, let them recharge, and then at night you've got a little bit of emergency light. Now, I think you should also have other options as well, but these are sort of one of those supplies that it's a why not put a few out in your yard to look pretty in your yard and in an emergency, you have those ready and available to you if you need them. Number seven here on the list, and this is a pretty important one. 
Manual appliances. Think about, you know, when we talk about preparedness, we talk about canned goods. And uh, if you have an electric can opener, that's fantastic. But in a grid down situation, what are you going to do with that electric can opener? Most people these days don't have a manual can opener. Uh, so I think that is one of those, just put it in your, your junk drawer, make sure you get a good one, make sure it's a quality one. Uh, and put it in your junk drawer. You may never use it, but it's going to be something that you're really glad you have in a disaster sit type situation. Coffee makers, this is the same type of situation, right? If it's a short term day or two power outage, uh, having a percolator or something where you can manually make some coffee and you don't have to worry about plugging in uh, the coffee maker uh, is going to help you out, get your day started. You know, that some people, and myself included, uh, a coffee is almost a necessity. So having those manual appliances, having paper plates and things like that. So where you don't have to wash dishes and use the water you have. Think about all those things that would your your daily routine, the things that you don't even give a second thought to. How would you do that in a disaster or grid down situation? Uh, and the answer is uh, getting manual supplies for some of the things that we use uh, that require electricity. Number eight here on this list of overlooked items to stockpile uh, is a preparedness library, books and manuals, things that we, these days we get online and we can look up just about anything. We can get the answer to just about any question we have. In a disaster, that is not going to be the case. So these days, we can look up really easily about how to filter water. What's a DIY method to filter water? In a disaster situation, we may not have that information available to us. So it's important to download and have physical copies of some of those things, whether it's books that are written, and there's plenty of books that are written on all of these different things as far as medical supplies or field manuals, all sorts of things that we can either download and put on a flash drive or print out and make a hard copy and put that in a binder. All right, so number nine here, I've got gardening tools and seeds. And gardening tools, you know, including shovels, hose, rakes, all of those things that we don't necessarily think of as preparedness supplies, but they absolutely are. And seeds are another one which you need to actually learn how to garden. Having the seeds is one thing, but actually getting those plants to grow and understanding how that works is another. But I think seeds is something that a lot of people just sort of overlook. They think about the long-term food storage. They think about the canned goods. All of that is super important, but what happens if you need to grow your own, if, if something does last a very long time and you have to grow your own food? Uh, on top of that, the, the learning process as far as growing your own fruits and vegetable, one, it's better for you. You know exactly what's in the food, but it can be sort of therapeutic as well. It could be something that you enjoy. There are plenty of different methods. It doesn't have to be, uh, you don't need to have 15 acres to garden. You can, there are container gardening. There's a lot of different options, hydroponics, aquaponics, a lot of different things that you can try and do. And it's a really good skill to have because you just never know how long something's gonna go on. And even if something doesn't happen, Having that skill can save you some money every month on your, your vegetables and your produce and things like that. And like I said earlier, it's just better for you. All right, so number 10 here. And again, this is something that people don't necessarily think of as a preparedness apply, but it absolutely is. And that's fire extinguishers, smoke detectors, and carbon monoxide detectors. Now, these things in a disaster scenario, a, a lot of these on this list are about a situation that's already bad. You don't want to make it worse. And when you think about a grid down situation or in the middle of winter, you're trying to heat your home, you're trying to light your home. If you're using candles or, or an open flame, those could make a situation uh, that is already bad and already stressful, even worse. So making sure you have those carbon monoxide testers, making sure you have those smoke detectors, making sure you have a few fire extinguishers around the house, just in case something happens. Because even as, as safe as we possibly can be, 
accidents happen all the time. And I think it's important, not just for preparedness purposes, but in general, everyday use. I think it's important to have a few fire extinguishers, smoke detectors, and carbon monoxide detectors around the house. It's just the smart thing to do. So that's 10 things that get overlooked as far as preparedness is concerned or don't even get talked about that are really important. Like I said earlier, you don't want to take a bad situation and make it worse by having the wrong type of shoes, by getting a blister on your foot when you have to walk four miles to get home in some sort of emergency or disaster situation. And by the time you get a mile away, you're you're basically limping. So uh, having paying attention to these different things, or if your water runs out, being able to find water, being able to filter water, all of these things that seem pretty small uh, on on the, the grand scale because they don't get talked about a lot uh, could have a huge impact in any sort of disaster situation. So now this is 10 items and there are, you know, there are plenty more. And as you get further into preparedness, you're going to figure out what those are, what things work for you, what things don't, all of that. But if you have any ideas, any comments or things I didn't talk about in this video, make sure and leave a comment below. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Something that is not thought about as enough or as much as it should be when it comes to preparing for any sort of disaster or anything like that. Thanks again, everyone, and take care and prepare.